Thank you, Michael, for the introduction. So my communication uh, will be dealing with data, data on work-related mental diseases in France. Uh, the explanation for that is that I recently moved from France to Canada and I prepared this communication while I was still working in France uh, with all of these people you are uh, seeing on this slide. Uh, these are my links of interest. This is pretty much common to disclose links of interest uh, in uh, communication in the medical field. Nothing really important to disclose. And I move uh, to my introduction. Um, so, uh, basically, mental health at the workplace is nowadays a major concern at an international level as well as some uh, national levels. And uh, some Quick things that could illustrate that are um, provided through the ILO Convention number 161 uh, about occupational health services. This convention has been ratified by 33 countries and it clearly states that uh, um, both physical and mental health should be taken into consideration while talking about occupational health. Uh, regarding WHO, the, the World Health Organization, located not, not far from here. Uh, WHO has dedicated its World Mental Day in 2017 on mental health at the workplace. So these two little things illustrate the, the interest on the question. Uh, some authors, such as Maëlie Stel Lamberton, uh, stated that we do have some data available on psychosocial hazards, but maybe not so much concerning work-related mental diseases. And uh, we have to say that there is a bit of confusion between hazards, risks, diseases, as well as uh, some confusions with uh, concepts uh, provided by human resources that are often mixed with concepts uh, from psychology or medicine. So I would like to, to just present data on diseases. So uh, these data will be, uh, I will be presenting are provided by two sources. The first one is coming from the insurance system. I will explain that a bit later, but I will start with uh, the data provided by the French National Network for Work-Related Diseases, Vigilance and Prevention. So what is that thing? Uh, in French, we call that the RNV3P. Uh, this is really difficult to, to, to pronounce in English. So. Uh, this network is an occupational health surveillance network and a classification of such surveillance network has been provided uh, by Jelena Bakosik working in the University of Louvain and this network is considered to be a non-compensation related system primarily, primarily designed for data collection and statistics. So uh, these are centers uh, covering France, uh, 30 different centers you can see on this map, and these centers are clinics where expert uh, advices are given to, to workers referred by physicians, mostly occupational physicians, to have uh, expert opinion on their uh, situation. So a lot of data are collected uh, in the database, including the disease they have uh, regarding the ICD-10. So maybe you're not familiar with that. It's, it's the International Classification of Diseases uh, provided by WHO. We also uh, gather occupational exposures, substances, agents, products, equipment, including work organizational characteristics, because all of these consult all of the different occupational diseases, not just the work-related, but all of these. So we, we can, the centers are able to, to see people with asbestos-related issues as well as mental uh, issues. We also collect information on the causal relationship with the disease, and this is rated by the physician from the center as being nil, weak, intermediate, or strong. And final, the occupation regarding the ISCO 08 classification provided by the ILO, as well as the business sector according to the French classification usually uh, provided. So we collected data on work-related disease and we, concern, we, 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 we considered that work-related diseases were diseases with at least one occupational exposure ranked at at least weak. So, uh, what are the data we had an interest in? Uh, we analyzed the database uh, over the period going from 2001 up to 2017. 
we include in most of the psychiatric diagnosis from the uh, ICD-10 classification, excluding a bunch of uh, diseases likely not uh, to be work-related, such as, for example, mental retardation, which is deemed not to be work-related. And we also included other relevant ICD-10 codes, not uh, figuring at these uh, chapter five, but elsewhere in the, in the classification, such as the burnout code, psychological abuse, and and so on. So in our analysis, we, we decided to, to keep the most uh, strong relationship with occupational factor. So we, we excluded the weak relation with the occupational uh, exposure, and we only kept the intermediate and strong causation link between the disease and the uh, occupational factors. So the data are provided here over the period. So you have here uh, a, a dramatic increase of the number of work-related mental disorders encountered in our centers. This is not meaning we have an increase in the overall population because we are a surveillance system. We are not an epidemiologic study. This just means that we have uh, an increase of the referrals to our centers. So we have an, in, an interest that is increasing, but we cannot deduce from this data that there is an increase in the population because we, we gather daily routine practice data. Uh, the sex ratio uh, for all of these uh, three, uh, 30,000 uh, work-related mental disorders, the sex ratio is pretty much what we see in the, in the literature when we have looked to, to this kind of data. Two-thirds of women, one-third of men, with a, a mean age and median age that is pretty much the same between both. The diagnoses are uh, the following. First of all, the anxiety disorders, uh, roughly 40% of the diseases collected in our database uh, with a medium or strong uh, causation link with uh, occupational aesthetics. The second one are depressive disorders. And the third one, something maybe non-physician people or non-psychologists are not familiar with, it's called the adaptation disorders. And let's say it's the, the soft version uh, of the two, the two lat letters of the anxiety disorders and depressive disorders. The, uh, adaptation disorders are deemed um, related to a causation factor and to, 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 to be cured by itself. It's deemed to be quite short in duration and not really severe. And all of the other diagnoses were roughly below 6%. The main business sectors in our population were public administration and defense, then retail trade, human health activities, teaching. The main occupations uh, encountered are business and administration, associate professionals, sales workers, general and keyboard clerks, and administrative and commercial managers. And all of these are uh, coded with the, the IE school uh, 08. So you can have a precise definition of what is under each category, more, more precisely. The occupational exposure for these uh, people uh, were, uh, were the following. Change in managerial processes, that was the, the, first, uh, the, the first exposure. Feeling bullied at the workplace, bad relationship with the hierarchy, violent behavior from a colleague. So uh, you have here not proportions, not race, but cases, because some people may accumulate several exposure and we had the opportunity to uh, gather all of these data. So uh, now I would like to move to the other source of data provided by the French uh, National Health Insurance and the Occupational Risk Department of our uh, insurance. So in France, this assurance, l'assurance maladie, uh, covers roughly 20 million workers uh, meaning uh, roughly 70% of the French workforce, meaning that we have other insurance system covering farming workers, uh, seafarers, uh, people working in public sectors. All of these people are excluded from this data. But uh, we, we gather data from the, the, the biggest uh, insurance provider. Uh, we distinguish occupational diseases and work injuries uh, and uh, mental disease could be compensated either on occupational diseases or work injuries. It is possible, not always, but in some uh, situation, it is possible to get compensated for a work-related mental disease. So talking about occupational diseases, uh, we have a case-by-case -case analysis within a committee 
at a regional level, called the Le Comité Régional de Reconnaissance des Maladies Professionnelles, C2RMP. And this committee, this regional committee, is able to provide an, an opinion and to, to compensate for three types of diseases provide, um, according to some guidelines. Uh, the major depressive disorders and anxiety disorders, remember the two biggest parts of our uh, pie chart, and some PTSD. PTSD is standing for post-traumatic stress disorders, uh, and PTSD is re related to type 2 trauma. So a, a bit of explanation about this. Uh, this uh, distinction between type 1 and type 2 traumas is discussed, but in France, we accepted the fact that we distinguish type 1 and type 2 traumas. So type 2 traumas are repeated traumas, little intensity, and this could be some uh, bullying at the workplace, uh, mobbing at the workplace, some repetitive violence at the workplace, leading to the same bunch of symptoms that could qualify the condition as uh, PTSD. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we have work injuries and work-related mental injuries. Uh, in this situation, we need to, to have a causation presumption that is met when first the injury caused an ill health issue and second, the injury is deemed work-related. And typically, the conditions that could be compensated as work injuries are suicide, so uh, the family uh, are, is doing the, the, the paperwork for that, suicide attempts and PTSD related to type 1 traumas. So the type 1 traumas, in opposition to type 2 traumas, are the big, big ones, meaning people are facing robbery, terror attacks, earthquake at the workplace, and so on. So one single huge trauma may lead to post-traumatic stress disorders, and as we have just one uh, key event, uh, we can compensate as work injuries. No compensation is provided for all of the others, usually, uh, adjustment disorders, as I told you, uh, this condition is likely to, to, to recover quite quickly. Burnout, as the concept is quite blurred and not considered as a disease, and mostly overlapping with depression and other uh, psychiatric diagnosis, as well as mobbing and harassment, because these, these are risk factors and no disease. Uh, here are the data concerning occupational diseases. So the first row of my uh, chart. So. Uh, a dramatic increase, but the numbers, you, you can barely see that, are pretty low. We are moving from 170 uh, in uh, 2010 up to roughly uh, 1,100 in 2016. We have on this bar chart um, both the accorded compensation and uh, the denied claims. Uh, the denied claims are the upper part in red, and uh, meaning the acceptance rate is roughly 50% and now it remains quite stable. Uh, regarding the diagnosis, uh, we have mostly major depressive episodes. Uh, this is the big majority of uh, the diagnoses that are compensated within our sample. Uh, and second, we have anxiety disorders and post-traumatic stress disorders. Roughly the same sex ratio and a mean age a little less than we have in the data provided by the, 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 the French National uh, Surveillance Network. Concerning now work-related injuries, so the big uh, things, the big issues, uh, we have data for year 2016. Around 10,000 work injuries were compensated for mental diseases, meaning 1.6% of all work injuries uh, um, provoking a sick leave. This is in comparison higher than data provided in 2011, which were 1.0%. Uh, so the explanation for that is that we have an increase of mental issues associated with a decrease of overall work injuries, so meaning that the rate is a bit higher. The acceptance rate for such claims is higher than we have in occupational diseases, remember, 50%. Here it's 70 for uh, work injuries, but it is lower than uh, the overall uh, acceptance rate, which is uh, 93%. So the, the, the explanation for that is that non-professional causes could be also responsible for the condition, and causation is, to the point of view of the insurer, much more difficult to prove. So, 
last uh, slide, uh, the, there is an increase of cases encountered in French occupational disease clinics that is associated with an increase of compensated cases uh, by the National Health Insurance, with the sex ratio that is quite the same between both, but a compensation that remains quite scarce. Uh, it compensating for 1,100 1, people is really, really low compared to the huge exposure to psychosocial hazards. And we, we notice that public sector is really impacted by psychosocial hazards. And it could be interesting to have data on compensation, but we were not able to gather them with the, the system uh, we explored. So now we have data. We have data on hazards. We have data on the, outs, the, the outcomes. So probably it's time to, to draw better policies and to act a little more strongly for this trouble. Thank you. Oh, mm. I thank you. Okay. I, I just forgot to, to, to thank all of these people. I wouldn't mention individually, but all of these people were the contributors to the, the project. It's a big collaborative effort. Thank you.